So we're going to do chromium, but we're going to dive into more than just chromium tonight. But I want to kind of talk about this very important nutrient. So if we look at, at some of the key roles of chromium, let's make that a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so this these are some of the main predominant roles of chromium. So the, one of the most important is that it helps to regulate how insulin interacts with your cells. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Chromium also has antioxidant properties, which can protect you uh, from a number of the things that people do over the holiday season. Again, predominantly overeating and then maintaining healthy cholesterol. When I say healthy cholesterol, um, if you're confused at all about cholesterol, I would encourage you to go back and watch some of my videos on cholesterol because when I say maintaining healthy cholesterol levels, it's not what most people think. And I, I want you to understand what I mean by that. It also helps to curb the appetite. And one of the reasons it helps to do that is because of its role with insulin. And again, we'll talk about that in more detail in just a minute. Um, but in addition, it contributes to bone maintenance in part because it helps preserve this compound calcium and hydroxyprolamine, which play a role in bone health. So chromium, very, very important as an element to blood sugar, very, very important as an antioxidant, very important in bone regulation, bone turnover, and bone health. Those are really predominantly the major functions of chromium. So I'm going to move this over because I want to talk to you about what happens. So here's probably the biggest culprit for most people as they're going into the holiday season is this right here. Now, if you're following my no grain, no pain diet, this is a taboo anyway. But again, I, what happens? I'm a, I'm a realist. Most people throw this caution pretty much to the wind. And so what happens is they're in, they have an increase in sugar intake. And so what that does is it leads to a spike in insulin, or rather let's, let's say a spike in blood glucose, which then leads to a spike in insulin. And so this is where chromium comes in, okay? So insulin has to talk to the cell. Insulin talks to the cell through what's called an insulin receptor, an IR. Let's get that out of here, IR, insulin receptor. Now, this is where chromium comes in. So again, this is a cell. Your DNA is right here. The glucose that's in the bloodstream has to make it into the cell where it can generate energy, ATP. And for this to happen, Insulin has to be able to talk to the insulin receptor, which is chromium. It's actually made out of two primary things, chromium and vitamin B3, otherwise known as niacin. So these two, this, this mineral and this B vitamin play a role in forming the insulin receptor. And without chromium and vitamin B3, we kind of get a blockage or a less effective connection between insulin and the insulin receptor, which means this glucose, instead of getting into the cell, gets trapped in the bloodstream, and so it elevates blood sugar. And this is what happens every holiday season, right? We get people that over imbibe in sugar, create this elevation in glucose, create this demand on insulin, create this increased need for chromium and B3, and if you overdo sugar enough, what you actually do is you deplete chromium and B3. You're overutilizing. You basically, sugar, remember why is sugar so bad? It has zero nutrients. There, are, there is no chromium in processed sugar. There is no vitamin B3 in processed sugar. Now the other thing during the holiday season, if we want to draw another arrow here, is alcohol. And alcohol also has zero nutrients. And alcohol, we know, reduces B vitamins, not just vitamin B3, but also minerals. So we know alcohol acts as a diuretic and it causes depletion of B vitamins, causes depletion of minerals. And so between the sugar and the alcohol and between people drinking alcoholic beverages with lots of sugar in them, the cocktails, etc., we get this kind of double hammer that comes down over the holidays. Now, depending on how you keep this in check, now some of you might have one, maybe two drinks, and some of you might have two drinks this week, and then when the holiday season starts and the parties begin, you're having 
you know, a fistful of drinks two or three nights a week. And that's where this really starts to set in and create the problems. Because when this happens, when your chromium is depleted, your B vitamins start to become depleted, your blood sugar goes up and your insulin goes up. But remember, this is also winter. And one of the things that happens during winter is your vitamin D goes down because there's not as much sun exposure. Now, vitamin D is necessary for insulin to work. So we've got vitamin D de depleted because of the time of the year coupled with excessive sugar and alcohol. What we end up with is a blood sugar nightmare. The chromium, the niacin depletion, the vitamin D levels low. Vitamin D, by the way, helps regulate how your pancreas makes insulin. So your pancreas can't properly produce insulin without vitamin D. And so you get this, this well, in this case, this trifecta, because it's three different primary nutrients that make it very, very hard for that glucose to get to your cell to make energy. So what happens when you can't get that glucose into the cell for energy is your body converts it into fat, and in this case, triglycerides. Okay, and then what happens? We could keep drawing here. Let's make some room on the board. Excessive triglycerides damage the liver, and guess what processes alcohol? Okay, the liver. So now, we get the toxicity effect of alcohol becoming stronger. The liver's overburdened with fat. This is actually, it's this elevation that can lead to fatty liver issues. So this is when I, when I was emailing you guys out earlier today talking about um, the damage that the holidays can do. This is very serious because even if you do this in short bursts over weeks at a time, you can really create a nutritional deficiency situation that makes it very hard to recover from because one of the things that happens when this is going on, right? When your blood glucose goes up, your triglycerides go up, your nutrients are low, is we generally tend to, let's switch over here. I'm not ready for this, so let's move it out of the way. We get, um, so we're just gonna draw an arrow from the previous page. We end up getting depression or many people do, B vitamins go low, we don't make serotonin and dopamine as well, we end up with depression. Some people get depressed because it's the holiday season already, and many people this year are extra depressed, right? They're extra depressed, why? Because, uh, because of the lockdowns and, and, the, and the economy and everything else that's happened as a result of, of, uh, of, of COVID politics. So we get depression, but in this case, it's, it's a depression because of nutrition, right? So it's a nutritional depression compounded with the potential for psychological or emotional depression. And so in that regard, we end up what? Reducing our output, if you will, or reducing our exercise. Nobody wants to depress or wants to exercise. Number one, when they're depressed, their energy is low because they're not generating enough energy. So they quit exercising during the holidays. But number two, Nobody wants to exercise um, when, when they're depressed and when it's cold outside. So like the cold uh, of the winter already creates this kind of, do I want to get up early in the morning and go out where it's cold and do and perform exercise? Like I battled a little bit with that myself this morning, although I, I woke myself up to do it anyway. Sometimes you just have to be stoic about your day. But the cold, right, and the nutritional depression will reduce for many people exercise, which leads to holiday weight gain. Right, and so we get holiday weight gain, and then subsequently to the holiday weight gain, what ends up happening is we make resolutions. Now, one of the most dangerous things you can do is make a resolution. Why is that? Because a resolution is nothing more than you telling yourself you're gonna give yourself the rest of the month of December to destroy your health by eating whatever you want because in January you're gonna do a fresh restart. And that's a horrible idea. You don't, rest, don't ever restart in January. You don't give yourself permission to self-deprecate for the next month. Make your resolution today to not let this whole scenario get out of hand. Now, if you had some alcoholic beverages or some sugar over Thanksgiving, 
forgive yourself, but move on. Like, don't let this continue to work you over over the course of the entire holiday season because we've got a whole other month of this before that you know, traditional resolution that people like to make gets made. So don't, again, don't, don't make yourself a victim of that parameter. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.